Good morning everyone. I'm standing at the bottom of Five Fingers. It's this formation right here. I have an idea for a 5k up to um, maybe about the halfway point, three quarters point is a mile and a half and so up and down would be 5k. Uh, I do the local races and thought it would be interesting to do one that has a lot of elevation gain. Uh, I want to be race director for it and basically organize it and see how it goes. I'd like to see people try uh, something a little bit different with a little bit more climb and see how people uh, see how people like that. This is something that I've done before. I like it. I run to the top of this thing every now and then. Uh, it is difficult and I'd like to uh, you know have a 5k out there that's a little bit more difficult than the, the ones that we typically see out here. So what I'm doing today is I'm gonna go up this mountain and I'm gonna be scouting the area uh, for basically uh, you know, turns, uh, where we might need trail markings, uh, elevation gain. I want to see how much elevation it actually is, where I'm going to set up a table. This is going to be actually a 5k plus is what I'm going to call it. So the 5k will end at what we call like the false summit of this place. There's a small place where it kind of flattens out before these prominences. So that's where the 5k will, well, the 5k will terminate down here, but you'll have a turnaround point around here somewhere and then it's going to be a 5k plus after that and that's going to be the actual summit to the top of here and my idea is to have it be from the end of the 5k point up there is going to be basically a free-for-all so no marked trail just however you make it to the top um, someone will get up someone will be up there already or I'll have a basket up there or something with a flag um, and then maybe like a piece of rope or something that someone can carry back down with them to show that they've actually been up there. And then I'll have prizes for, you know, first place male, first place female, and, you know, maybe some other stuff. If uh, kids are involved, maybe I'll have kid prizes or something like that. But, uh, yeah, let's get started. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hike up this thing today and uh, just check for distance and elevation and, you know, look at any turns that might need to be marked or anything like that. All right, so I have an altimeter on my cell phone. And it says that right now we're at 3,050 feet. So this is going to be the start point right here going up this trail. We're going to see uh, what kind of elevation gain we're looking at for, for basically the 1.6 miles, mile and a half, whatever it is, uh, where people would turn around for the regular 5K. So we're going to head up here and uh, starting line will be here. So I'll go ahead and turn on my Fitbit to track um, track distance right now. And then uh, kind of look at the course as we as we go up here. The course will basically be this dirt road that you see here. It's a lot of loose sand. Um, there's not much hard compact stuff. It is difficult to uh, to run up. It gives me a tough time when I do it. And there's no downhill. <laughs> downhill will be coming back down, but going up. There's no downhill portion whatsoever. So here we have a little fork. I don't think people would get confused here, but this may be a good place for arrow and uh, a couple trail markers right here. Maybe right here to let people know they're going the right, right way. When it comes to trail marking, you know, better more or overkill than not enough. There's really not anything worse than being on a race and not being sure if you're actually on trail or not. So going up this trail, this is typically what I see. Basically a whole lot of ground. <laughs> There's a lot of looking at the ground. It's a very steep incline. Um, you can look ahead, but it's really hard to tell where the trail goes. Just, you know, from where we're at because of the incline and because of some of the turns. But as you're coming down, you get to see all this. And it's really beautiful and it's nice to look at. So my goal, I guess, is to have a flag that's going to be visible from the, the top of the mountain uh, right up here. That way it can be seen from down here. Hopefully it can be seen from the saddle where this is the regular 5K is going to end. Uh, so you can see it the entire time um, if you're choosing to run the 5K+. plus. So here we have a split in the trail. Uh, we'll be going this way. All right, I'm about a mile in. It's about 60 degrees out and I'm already breaking the sweat just walking up this thing. 
So we've reached what I believe will be the highest point of the 5K. It's uh, 4,270 feet. So that gives about 1,200 feet of climb. Now we'll go on longer than this. I kind of thought it would end here, but I think I'm going to have to go a little bit further to get an actual 1.5, 1.6 miles so people can do a 5K. So uh, we'll continue on and see how it goes and where we end up. Either that or maybe I can end it here and start everybody a little bit further back than the uh, actual start of the trail. We'll see. So from here, from the what we would, I would call the false summit or saddle or whatever, um, we're still going to go up there and then I'll have someone with a flag up here somewhere that will basically be the 5k plus ending. So uh, let's go see where the 5k will potentially end. Uh, I guess I will have to mark some of the trail coming through here. Now my idea um, is that after the 5k um, it'll basically be a free for all to the top, a scramble. There is a trail that goes up there. Uh, and I think I will mark a trail, but I will let everybody know that they can, uh, they can choose their own way up. I don't know if you can see the trail from here, but, uh, I think once we get a little bit closer, it'll be easier to see. Okay, so here's the trail up. We're actually not even, not as close to 5k as I would like to be, or, um, halfway to 5k. Let's see where, theoretically, it would end if, uh if I were to stop it. It would have to be somewhere halfway up this trail. I really want the 5k to end where we were earlier. So that's looking straight on at the trail. It actually goes up there. This is very, very loose sand and gravel. Literally, as you're walking, it's like you're taking two steps forward and like one step back. I don't want the uh, regular 5Kers to have to uh, come up this or run on this. We haven't even reached the halfway point for a 5K yet. So this is the actual halfway point. You can see the top is just right there. It's not far at all. You get kind of an idea of the... Uh, elevation that we're dealing with here for this 5k it's not meant to be easy but the regular 5k shouldn't be this hard you shouldn't have to come up uh, this stuff here to do it so what i'm gonna have to do is find my where i want to end and move the starting point further back from the trailhead because you shouldn't have to come to this point to to do it but the 5k plus is definitely going to end up here if I was to end right here for the regular 5K, it'd be um, 4,724 feet, something like that. That's uh, 1,700 feet of climb. That's just too much. It's it's too much for a regular 5K. Plus, it'll take away from the 5K plus if uh, you know all they have to do is another you know quarter mile or whatever up this hill. So we're definitely going to move it back. All right, I do want some light scrambling to be required, but this looks a little bit aggressive for a foot race and possibly dangerous. Um, I don't want anyone falling. I'm gonna climb up it myself just to see, but uh, it looks a little bit too too much for a foot race. Okay, well, you know this is this is too steep to be climbing with uh, with no equipment like this um, for a race, especially with people that have been. Uh, you know, have their, their energy depleted. We don't need them screwing up trying to climb a, a surface like this. It's uh, too much, not safe. So we'll have to abandon this point and find a different point to do this at. I want people to actually be able to see over the, uh, the ridge here and see the valley on the other side uh, and to actually be at the top of some portion of this mountain. Yeah, looking at this, if someone were to take a fall, they would hit all these rocks on the way down and that would, uh, that would suck, so we're not gonna do that. So we're back down where I split from the original trail. What I'm gonna do is follow the original trail, I guess, up uh, up here around this rock formation right here. And uh, I know there's a place up there that we can plant a flag that should be able to be seen from the bottom. I guess I'll get on top of it and see if I can see the bottom. And that way I'll know there's a uh, direct line of sight there. All right, I think this is gonna be it. This is gonna be the ending point for the race. We'll uh, come up here some uh, very light scrambling or they can go around the dirt path so it's not not dangerous 
and then uh, let's see, since I'm filming, I'll go this way. And then we'll end it on this set of rocks up here, so they will have to come up these rocks. It's not a big deal, not, not particularly dangerous. So they'll come up here, I'll have a flag. I can see the trail down there, so they should be able to see all the way up here. And they can take in the view up here the other side. Or hustle back down. Once they get up here, I'll give them like a piece of rope or something. Something to indicate that they've been up here. And then they'll take that back down with them. And when they cross the finish line down there, they'll get first place. But, uh, I took a little bit of a sidetrack, but it's, you know, 1.83 miles. It's not really that far in distance, but the elevation gain is going to get you. I'll look at the elevation gain right now and see how much it is where we're at. So we're at 4,972 feet. So we started at 3050. Um, I don't know, it's about 1,900 feet, almost 2,000 feet of elevation gain over uh, less than two miles. So it's, it's pretty steep. Uh, you know, it's meant to be challenging. It's not meant to be dangerous. Uh, so, you know, I'm trying to take any kind of danger factors that are out of it, but uh, we still want it to be difficult. Last time I was out here, I actually, I put something on top of that rock out there, and I want to see if it's still out there. So I'm going to climb up there and uh, check it out and see if it's still there. I did post it on the internet. It's a uh, painted rock, and we're part of a, I'm part of a local Facebook group that does, like, rock painting, hunting and finding and placing and stuff like that. And, I don't actually paint the rocks, but uh, I find them all the time. And I take them and rehide them in different places. Sometimes it's very public places. Sometimes I choose weird places like this that are uh, a little difficult to get to. Um, because you know what? It's cool to find a uh, memento out here that uh, somebody else has left behind that says that basically they've been here too. And I always think it's really cool to find something like that while I'm out. So I imagine other people do too. Let's not fall down here. Uh, I don't see it. All right, made it. Uh, you know what? I set it out here, and uh, it's gone. Someone came and got it. That's crazy. All I left was a uh, picture. It was a rock with an owl on it. And I left a picture. It was it just, it was a picture like this right here. And I told him it was on five fingers, but as you can see, it's a pretty big mountain. I guess maybe from the visual here, maybe someone just happened to be hiking out here and picked it up. But uh, that's really cool that someone someone got it. I'm gonna go home and check Facebook and see if they uh, if they posted that. That's really cool. But since I'm not starting from where I originally thought we were gonna start at, I'm gonna measure the distance from the end point to the beginning. Um, from the top of this rock here where I decided we were going to end, um, all the way to the start of where the 5k should be. This is probably a rookie mistake, but uh, hey, you, you do things like this and you learn, so uh, Let's learn. I'm headed back down. You know, up uphill is kind of a slog. Going downhill is difficult too. And if you don't control your speed, if you don't control your speed, um, you could hurt yourself. Um, last time we were up here, my son JoJo, uh, you can check him out at uh, his YouTube channel. I'll link it down in the descriptions, or if I can put it here, I'll put it here. I don't know how to do that, but I'll figure it out. Um, we were coming down this particular area, and uh, I'm very used to doing this because I've done this a lot. But uh, he was, uh, I was running, not here, but a little bit further down. I was running, and I wasn't trying to beat him or anything. I was just, that's just how I'm used to doing this. And, uh, you know, this is an empty area. There's no one else out here. There's... I'm out here, so, you know, everything's very line of sight for where we're at. I don't, wouldn't leave my kid behind while I'm 
doing something like this. But, uh, you know, if I can see him, we're, we're okay. But uh, I guess he felt that I was getting too far away. And uh, he started running. And he's never done that on something like this before. And you can see this type of stuff. I mean, it just wants to move under your feet. And, you know, it's a really steep incline. I don't know if you can tell how steep it is, but it's, it feels like it's about 45 degrees. Um, he got going too fast and he couldn't stop. And he ended up going so fast that he actually passed me up and uh, he fell down. And he didn't really hurt himself, but when he landed, he put his hands right into one of these guys, or a bunch of these guys. I don't know if you can see the little prickles on those, but uh, he got those all in his hands. He's nine years old, I mean, you know, he's your typical kid. I know it would have really hurt. I've had the things in my hands and in my legs and stuff before, and they suck. Um, but he must have had, I don't know, a hundred at least. And we had to sit there and pull them all out. Luckily I had my pack with me and I carry tweezers for this exact reason. Uh, because it's something that does happen fairly commonly out here. So you got to be prepared for that type of stuff when you're out in an area like this. Or just learn to live with the, uh, the spikes in your hand until you can get a pair of tweezers. One or the other. Yeah, this area here is exactly where he lost control. He was running down this and... Um, I don't know if I can really show you the, the angle here, or if you can see it very well, but this is pointing down, but if you point it just straight across. I don't even know if you can see the trail doing that. If I tilt it down a little bit, maybe. I don't know. But uh, it's quite steep. And uh, he really did take, take quite a spill. Now I'm typically in trail running shoes when I run this, but... Uh, I can run it a little bit so you get an idea of how fast you can get going down this thing. Uh, loose sand, uh, if you've never ran on something like this before, a kind of a way, good way to deal with it is like, you aim for the loose sand, dig your heels in, and that gives you a, a little bit of a, a little bit of stopping power as you're going down something like this. Today I'm wearing my hiking boots. Um, they're not really ideal for running, but I mean, it'll give you an idea of how fast you can get going. And uh, maybe I can get a shot of my feet and you can see how you, uh, manage doing something like this. Well, let's go. And as quick as that, you have covered that trail area real quick. This is fantastic. I, I hoped that this would happen. We have all kinds of creatures out here. This is one of them. This is a tarantula. This guy. Ooh, look at him, he's so mad. Can we pet him? Will he get mad? Yeah, he's kind of mad. I don't think I want to pick him up. But, uh, anyways, you can see how big he is in comparison to my hand. And, uh, I'm, uh, I'm six feet tall, so I got pretty decent sized hands. Now he's a pretty big dude. Not for a tarantula, but for a spider, he's big. But, uh, yeah, my kids, they never come with me, and they love creatures, and they always miss stuff like this. So, uh, I don't know, maybe they'll come out with me a little bit more if they, uh, get to see these guys. Get to see these guys in action, I don't know. 
and we have snakes and stuff out here too, but um, this is tarantula season, so this is when you typically see them around October. Really happy I saw that, that really made my day. Okay, so we're back at the uh, false summit saddle. Um, this is where I want it to end. So what I'm going to do is go back down the hill and see where the halfway point is from here. And then that will be the start of the race. That makes uh, more sense, I think. Where I want to end at the bottom is 1.15. So we're going to have to go a little bit further out that way till we get to 1.55. So this is 1.55. This would be the starting point right here um, behind the uh, aqueduct pipeline. It looks like there's a space down here where people could park if uh, they're comfortable with uh, driving over some of the loose, loose dirt. And they could park, you know, all up and down this road. The uh, pipeline right there looks like a good uh, point of reference too. It's just not a true 5K. So uh, I think we will start back here. That way it's... Uh, we get the whole the whole thing the real deal well that's it for now i hope you enjoyed coming along with me it was an interesting little hike we are headed back to the car and i hope you enjoyed uh looking at the trail a little bit before we get everything started here i really helped to be able to do this i thought about it before and i kind of gave up on the idea and thought about it again and i just love this trail so much i think it's really challenging and it'll be a, a fun experience it's meant to be hard. Uh, we'll probably do it rain, shine, you know, wind, whatever. So I'll have to get in contact with a couple other race directors and uh, the leader of my running club and see what exactly uh, it takes to uh, host a race. I don't know if there's insurance requirements or waivers that need to be signed or anything like that, but I have a, a half marathon coming up with them this weekend. So I'll get a chance to talk with them and get everything together. I'm shooting for probably like February or March. I don't want it to be hot out here when we do it. Uh, I don't want it to be blistering cold either. Right now it'd be perfect, but you know, right now it's not really enough time to get everyone together. And before the holidays is really a bad time to do something like this. So we'll try to do it afterwards and People will still be running and getting in shape and hopefully uh, gearing up for summer and hopefully still excited about their New Year's resolution to get into shape or whatever. I don't think there's a lot going on in February, so if we put it out there, you know, far enough in advance, I think we'll have a uh, decent participation.